Hi guys, today I will take you through the second topic of Form 3 in Computer Studies, that is Data Processing. Let's look at our course outline. We shall look at Introduction to Data Processing. We shall look at Data Processing Cycle. We shall look at Description of Errors in Data Processing, Data Integrity, data processing method, computer files, types of computer processing files, file organization methods, and lastly, we shall look at electronic data processing modes. Data processing deals with how data is organized and processed in the computer. It is also important for us to look at the term data and uh, information Therefore, when you talk about data, data is a collection of facts and figures which can be processed to produce information. And for that matter, then information will be processed data. Data are the facts relating to an activity in a given environment. The activity can be accounting, inventory control, uh, ETC. Environment can be business, scientific, or education. Examples. In an educational environment, when students sit for exams, the grades obtained represent the data to be processed by the computer. In this case, data can be names of the student and marks obtained. In a business environment, data can be number of hours worked, names of employees, stock, etc. Data can also be described as raw data or raw facts. If they are not yet, uh, that is if they are not yet processed. That is, if they do not convey particular meaning to a given activity within any given environment. It is therefore means that data are unprocessed information consisting of details relating to business transactions. For example, in a payroll system, data are employees' names, basic salary, department number, marital status, blah, 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 blah. Then we can look at the uh, data processing. That is the term data processing. The collection, manipulation, and distribution of data that is letters, numbers, and graphical symbols to achieve certain objectives. Therefore, the correction of that, the processing may involve calculations, comparisons, decision making, and or any other logic produce or product uh, the, uh, that requires some results. The activity of manipulating the raw facts to generate a set of meaningful data described as information that is also another way of describing data processing, the activity of manipulating the raw facts to generate a set of meaningful data, that is, uh, information. Then we can look at information. Information is data which is summarized and processed in the way you want it so that it is useful in your work. Information is an assembly of meaningful data items. Let's look at an example. The information in payroll activity includes net pay, total tax deductions, ETC. In stock control, the information generated includes crossing stock, a total cost of items, purchases, sales, ETC. The information is obtained by applying some processing produce, uh, procedures onto the raw data being input. For instance, to get the net pay in a payroll activity, the procedure would be net pay equals to basic salary plus allowances plus overtime, if any, minus taxes. Therefore, you will get the net pay. Then we can look at characteristics or features of good information. And therefore, good information should have the following features or characteristics. They should have and serve a purpose, be relevant to its purpose, be complete, accurate, and comprehensive, 
have been obtained from a reliable source be communicated to the right person in the right time, that is, it should be timely, be clear and understandable, it should be non-ambiguous, therefore should be clear and understandable by the user. The user must have confidence in it. Therefore, those are some of the characteristics of uh, information. Then let's look at the relationship between data, data processing and information. As Arya said, data are the facts which relate to any particular activity and do not have any specific meaning. Whereas information is data with a, defin a definite meaning. And therefore data processing is the process which transforms data into information. Mark that data processing is the process which transforms data into information. For instance, in a manufacturing industry, data may be compared to raw materials and information can be compared to finished products. Just as raw materials are transformed into finished products, raw data are transformed into information. And therefore, data processing is the process of, uh, of transforming data into information. That is now well understood. Diagrammatically, uh, you can look at what we are explaining. Therefore, we have the raw data. Data processing takes place. We get information which is useful to the user. Then we have the stages that data follows for it to get processed. We call it data processing cycle. And therefore, data processing cycle refers to the various stages involved in converting data into information. There are five primary element stroke functions of data processing system, or the data pro that is the uh, data processing cycle follows the following stages. We have input stage, processing stage, storage st uh, uh, stage, output stage, and control. And therefore, we shall use a diagram to explain that. Uh, basically, if you look at uh, the first one, we have origination of data. Data originates from source documents, that is time cards, sales orders, purchase, invoices, etc. Then preparation of uh, data for input. Data is transcribed or sorted, etc. Then we have input of data. Data is recorded in the media, medium suitable for input and handling by the data processing system, e.g. punch cards, floppy disk, CDs, flash disk, external hard disks. Then we have processing of data. Data is entered into the data processing system that is processed, sorted, calculated, compared, and analyzed. That is the processing activities. Then we have the output of information, output consisting of printed or type written forms, it is summaries, reports and documents are prepared. Then once the output is given, it is stored. Also the input is also stored waiting for processing. Therefore this one can be engaged in these three steps. Input can engage storage, processing can engage storage and output can also engage storage. Therefore, storage of data, data is stored in filing cabinets in case it's hard copy, that is the printed or type uh, written data. Then it can also be stored in microfilms like the library uh, bookstores, the catalogs, blah, blah, blah. And we have um, floppy disket, we have magnetic tapes, etc. Uh, some people may simplify the diagram like I have done showing you that there is a data collection, then we have data input, data processing, then goes to output. That is a simplified version of the diagram above, but I would advise you to use the data because it is well explained. Then we can go uh, further and uh, look at the uh, steps in depth. We have data collection. Data collection is the process involved in getting the data from the point of its origin to the computer in a form suitable for processing. Note, 
Data collection starts at the source of raw data and ends when varied data is within the computer in a form ready for processing. And therefore, data capture and data entry. Data entry. Nowadays, most end users input data to the computer using keyboards on the personal computers, workstations, or terminals. Data can originate in many forms, but the computer can only accept it in a machine readable format. Problems of data entry. The data to be processed by the computer must be presented in machine readable form. That is one way that uh, brings a hindrance. Number two, the process of data collection involves getting the original data to the processing center, transcribing it, sometimes converting it from one medium to another, and finally getting it into the computer. This process involves a great number of people, many machines, and it is actually expensive. Therefore, the point there is it is expensive. And in the first point, it is that the computer can only understand machine readable format. That means the data you collect in human readable uh, is useless until you convert it to a way the computer can understand. Now let's look at data capture. Data capture is the process of obtaining data in a computer a readable format. Obtaining of data in computer readable format helps to avoid many of the problems of data entry. The captured data may be stored in some intermediate form for later entry into the main computer in the required form. If data input, if data is input directly into the computer at its point of origin, the data entry is said to be online. In addition, if method of direct input is a terminal or workstation, the method of input is known as direct data entry. Therefore, you can write those down. Then let's now go to stages of or stages in data collection. The process of data collection may involve any number of foreign stages depending on the methods used. Mark that point very well because I'm sure you use different textbooks. The process of data collection may involve any number of the following stages. That doesn't mean that if we add stages, they doesn't exist, they exist, but they depend on the method used. Number one, we have data creation. Data creation, this involves two basic alternatives. Uh, you can use source documents or data capture. Source document is the original document used to record data and or instructions. Most of the data is in form of manually scribed or typewritten documents. That is, the data is on critically prepared source documents. Then we have the data capture. This involves preparing the source document itself in a machine a readable format. It may be used as input to the computer without the need of transcription. This, for example, if you capture something using a digital camera or nowadays something like a scanner, something like a barcode reader, that one we can just call it a data capture. Then we can go to step number two. Uh, and actually, these steps must not follow each other. It depends with the method. We have data transmission. This is, uh, this will depend on the method and the medium of data collection involved or adopted. If the computer is located at a central point, the documents will be physically transmitted, that is, by the post office or a carrier to the central point. The data can also be transmitted by means of telephone lines to the central computer. This is, this in this case, no source documents would be involved in the transmission process. Then we can talk of data preparation. Data preparation is the term given to the transcription of data from the source document to a machine readable format. Therefore, it is the conversion of human readable to machine readable formats. There are two parts involved, the original transcription 
and verification process. Then we have conversion of data from one media to another. In some books, they will call it uh, media conversion or conversion of data from one media to another. I have just simplified the language. Data is prepared in a particular medium and converted to another medium for faster input into the computer. For example, data might be prepared on a diskette or captured onto a cassette. Remember, diskette and cassettes are, are no more in use in our country. And then converted to magnetic tape for input. Or for further, it can be converted into a DVD version or that is CD-ROM or DVD-ROM. The conversion will be done on a computer that is separate from the one which we, uh, will actually process data. We can also talk of input. The data now in magnetic form, now that we have converted, is put into the computer and subjected to validity checks by a computer program before being used for processing. Then we can look at sorting. This stage is required to rearrange the data into the sequence required for processing. Sorting is necessary for efficient processing of sequentially organized data in many commercial and financial applications. And therefore, sorting is just arranging data in a certain uh, manner. Then we have the control. In all the stages of data collection, control must be established and applied where necessary. In other words, control is usually applied uh, throughout the whole process of data uh, collection. Therefore, control is summarized here, but should actually be in all other stages. Then we can look at uh, various methods of data collection. The following are alternatives that can be used to collect data. Use of data capture devices such as scanners, Kimball tags, point of sale, that is the POS, barcode readers, and magnetic strip readers. Therefore, you can use those ones as uh, data collection methods. Then you have types of errors in data processing. We shall look them, uh, we shall look at the errors in a summarized way. Therefore, meanwhile, we skip that. Let's look at another subtopic, data integrity. What is data integrity? It refers to the correctness and completeness of data entered in a computer or received from the information system. Therefore, data integrity is the correctness and completeness of data entered in a computer or received from the information system. It's measured using the following parameters. Therefore, in an exam situation, we may be asked to uh, name the parameters used to gauge the correctness and completeness of data, that is data integrity. Therefore, the first one is accuracy. The second one is timeliness. The next one is relevance. Accuracy refers to how close an, approxima uh, an approximation is to actual value. Like for example, if I say 8.67, then somebody else comes and say nine. You see 8.67, then for example, somebody else brings 8.999. Then somebody who says 8.99 is nine is accurate. That is, he uh, has a close approximation to the actual value. Timeliness. This means that it is uh, it is the relevant uh, that is it is the uh, it is the um, when we talk about timeliness it is uh, ensuring that data reaches the destination the right time and therefore avoid this, avoid inconveniences. Relevance means that data entered must be appropriate to the processing needs at hand and must meet the requirements of the processing cycle. That means that uh, you bring data that is actually required for a certain thing or for a certain system or for a certain purpose. That is, those are the three main parameters, accuracy, timeliness, and 
relevance. Then we can just uh, have an overview of data control. The quality of that is the quality of input data is important to the accuracy of output. Control must be instituted as early as possible in the system and everything possible must be done to ensure that data is complete and accurate before being input uh, to the computer. Objectives of data control to detect, collect and reprocess all errors to ensure that all data is processed, to preserve the integrity stroke reliability of maintained data, to prevent or detect fraud or deception. Therefore, those are some of the objectives of data control. Then we have types of data controls. We have the following are controls that can be used to ensure data accuracy. We have verification. Uh, when we talk about uh, verification, this is the process of checking and ensuring that data has been transcribed or written out correctly. Verification is whereby several computer users are given data to enter into the computer and the results are compared. Or else, a second transcription is compared with the first one. If the results are different, then there is inaccuracy in that data. This method is mostly used to verify password changes. Then we have the main types of errors which might occur. That is uh, during verification, you may get missing data, duplication of data, use of outdated records, incorrect batches of input data, incorrect recording, recording at the source, incorrect data preparation. Those are some of the uh, errors you may get during data verification. Then we also have manual controls, apart from now the system verification. This involves considerable checking of the source document, such as uh, checks may be, uh, such checks may be, inspecting the source document to detect missing entries, illegal entries, illogical or unlikely entries comparing the document against stored data to verify entries, recalculating to check calculations made on the document. Okay, apart from verification, we have validation checks. Therefore, we have verification and validation. The first look at validation checks. A computer cannot notice errors in the data processing, in, uh, in data being processed in the way that a crack or a machine operator does. Therefore, let's look at data validation. Data validation is the process of preventing long data, wrong data from being processed. It involves checking whether the results generated by the computer are valid or applicable. During input of data preparation, the data must be checked for transcription errors through a process known as verification. Once the data is brought into the computer memory directly from an input device, immediately before processing, the data is again objected to checks built in the program described as validation checks to check the data integrity or the conformity of data to processing requirements. Data validation includes testing for the following. You can have tests for reasonableness. The computer program checks whether the data is reasonable. For example, number of people should not be presented in decimals. That is nine and a half children or 9.4 people. Test for numbers. For example, number, numbers should not be given as alphabets. Test for alphabets. Alphabets should not be numbers such. Then from there, let's have the summary. I promised you that we shall have a summary of errors. We skipped a certain portion. I also advise you to skip when revising. Therefore, I have summarized the errors in this slide. Description of errors in data processing. Now, computer works with the principle of uh, you give it wrong data, it gives you wrong results. 
you give it accurate and correct data, it gives you correct and accurate results. This one can be described by the term garbage in, garbage out. We usually denote it as GIGO, G-I-G-O, garbage in, garbage out. That means give computer wrong data, it gives you wrong results. Then errors in data processing can be classified in these three categories. We have transcription errors. These are errors that occur during data entry. For example, such errors include misreading error and transposition errors. Misreading means you have read wrongly. Instead of uh, reading um, the word garbage, you read cabbage. That is the, uh, the food, cabbage, the food we eat. Therefore, if you read the word garbage as cabbage, then that is misreading, or you read 56. 56, you read, um, you read it as uh, 6, or something like the word so, S-O, you read it as 50. That means misreading. Then transposition is uh, alternating the characters. For example, instead of writing 90, you write 09, or instead of writing 65, you write 56. That is transposition error. Then we have computation errors. These are errors that occur when arithmetic operation or mathematical operation does not produce expected results. For example, somebody may round off 9.5 and write it as 10. Therefore, you have added somebody 0 0.5. That is an error, rounding off. Somebody else may truncate 9.999. It truncates and removes the last uh, uh, digits. Therefore, to truncate is actually to cut. Then overflow. These are extra characters that appear. Remember, in my last topic, uh, in sorry, in my previous topic, data representation. If you have not watched, kindly watch that clip. Uh, it's under this uh, playlist. I, uh, I took you through overflow errors. That is in ones and twos complement. Therefore, an overflow is an extra digit that is not required in that computation. Sometimes we ignore, sometimes we add it to the answer. Then we have algorithm errors. First of all, we need to know what is an algorithm. This one will be covered in the next topic, elementary programming, still in this playlist. You can get the playlist uh, or the links uh, below this video. An algorithm in computer uh, uh, that is in computer, is a set of steps for order to solve a problem. Wrongly designed algorithm will resort to errors. And therefore, when you write a wrong algorithm during programming, uh, the errors the users will get are, 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 that is, algorithm errors. Then we can look at the uh, various uh, data processing uh, that is the data processing modes. We have the, we can talk of the manual system, mechanical system, and electronic system. Therefore, we shall look at the, uh, the data processing modes. Therefore, when you talk about data processing, you can process um, data manually. You can process data mechanically. You can also uh, process data electronically. Therefore, those are the data processing methods. Data processing methods is our uh, subtopic here. Therefore, we have manual processing, we have mechanical processing, and we have electronic uh, processing. When you talk about the manual processing, is whereby the boss in the uh, the boss in the department or in the company is given data, and therefore he has two types of tray. He has the in-tray, he process using his brain, then once he process like signing a check or signing an invoice, then he, he or she places it into the out-tray. Whereas we only talk about the mechanical processing or by use of mechanical systems, we use calculators, we use typewriters, such machines to process data, and therefore we shall refer that one as mechanical processing or mechanical systems. Then we have electronic systems. This is the use of modern computers. 
and therefore it can be referred as electronic systems or electronic that, that is electronic processing then we have reasons for changing from manual to mechanical and electronic system why do you think uh, people may opt to move from manual system to a mechanical system or to an electronic system therefore the points are for convenience to be able to process big volumes of data to have or improve on accuracy and also to improve on operational speed also to link applications if one application is in a different city then you can link them using the networks we have types of networks uh, we shall run those ones in form 4 then we have better services to customer or better uh, service to uh, your clients then you have factors that determine the method of data processing remember uh, we have talked of manual data processing electronic data processing and uh, mechanical data processing therefore what are the factors that determine the methods or of data processing the following are the factors that influence the method of data processing selected number one size and type of business number two timing aspects of the information produced from the system and number three link between applications those are the three main uh, factors that determine the method of data processing then you can look at another uh, subtopic computer files this is a very good uh, part and also very educative let's look at computer files and therefore we shall start by defining a file now in form one you looked at files and folders therefore let's just have a recap a file is a collection of related records simple a file is just a collection of related uh, records for example or that is several records put together that give a complete set of information about a certain item or particular business entity we can look at the advantages of computerized filing system of a manual filing system therefore number one information takes up less space than the manual filing it is much easier to update or modify information it offers faster access and retrieval of data it enhances data integrity that is also security reduces duplication of data we call it data redundancy then we can look at uh, two very um, confusing terms we have logical and physical files computer files are, class are classified as either logical or physical what are logical files and what are physical files? Logical files, a logical file is a type of file viewed by the user in terms of what data items it contains and what processing operations may be performed on the stored data items. Whereas physical files, a physical file is viewed in terms of how the data items found in a file are arranged on the service of the storage media for example disk or tape and how stored data items can be processed therefore here uh, we have two keywords i have uh, italicized them what and how make sure you get those terms how and uh, what then we have the data hierarchy in data, a hierarchy is an arrangement of like a family tree, kind of. In data processing, data is organized from the smallest element to the most comprehensive or to the largest. And therefore, this is the data hierarchy. We have bits. Bits, a bit is the smallest. Then we have characters. A bit, like for example, we can take A. Characters, we can take the word data. We can say it has four characters. Therefore, we have bits. We have characters, we have feeds. Now, a feed is a group of characters. Then you have records. A record is a collection of feeds. Then you have a file. A file now is a combination of related data, records, uh, maintained in some pre arranged order. 
then it has database. Now database is the largest, consists of several related and integrated data files. And therefore, we start with a bit, we go to characters, we go to feeds, we go to records, file, and then uh, we go to uh, database. Therefore, that one is very crucial, but it's very important for us to uh, know. Then we can go to elements of computer files. Now we can just go and look at, uh, that is, at, at them in a comprehensive way. And therefore, uh, we have a computer file is made up of three elements. We have characters, we have feeds, and records. A character is the smallest element in computer file and can refer to a letter, number, and symbols that can be entered, stored, and output by a computer. Then you have fields. A field is an item of data or information consisting of one or more characters. A field is made up of combination of characters and forms the attribute. An attribute is characteristics of a given entity. When you talk about an entity, an entity is the thing or item in which data is kept about, for example, a student, a vehicle, a house. And therefore, an attribute are the characteristics of an entity. I have said an entity is a thing or an item in which data or database is kept about, for example, a student. Whereas an attribute are the characteristics of an entity. And therefore, for our case here, a student is our entity. Then a student has name index number, age, those are the attributes. And therefore, in a student record, the student, that is the entity, has admission number, which is a field. There are two types of fields. We can have a fixed length fields and variable. Variable means it keeps on changing. Then you can look at records. A record is a collection of related fields, which together form a, or represents a single entity. In any particular file, there is a separate record for each entity. For example, in a class score sheet, the details of each individual student in a row such as name, admission number, total marks, and position. Therefore, that one can actually uh, come inside your mind. Then we have types of computer processing files. This is our next subtopic, computer processing files. There are various types of files used to store data needed for processing. Data processing files are classified according to their uses within the overall data processing activities. Secondary, the kind of data or information they store. Therefore, that is according to purpose and type of data or kind of data. The main types of data processing files include, we have master files, transaction files, reference files, sort files, backup files, and uh, we shall skip the two and go to report files. The others will be accommodated in the others. Let's look at master files. A master file is the main file that contains permanent records about particular items or entries against which transactions are processed. Master files contain records which have long-term significance or importance and are very important for the running of the organization. Master files normally contain two types of data, static data and dynamic data. Therefore, master file, this is the file that contains the permanent records. Then we have reference, uh, that is, uh, we have the next one transaction or movement files. A transaction file contain individual data about the transaction or activities that occurred in the business during a particular period of time. For example, in a supermarket, you can talk of today. Uh, if it is 1st July, you can talk of transactions of 1st July, transactions of 2nd July. Those are the transaction files. They, they are actually individual or uh, files of activities in a particular period of time. And therefore, uh, they are actually 
a top tab or added to the master file. Then you have reference file. A reference file is used for reference or lookup purposes. Lookup information is the information which is stored in a separate file but is required during processing. For example, the item code entered either manually or using a barcode reader in a point of sale terminus is used to look up the item description and price from a reference file stored on a storage device. Therefore, that one can cap, uh, come up in your mind during supermarket. You usually see the cashiers looking up uh, for a certain code to bring the price of the item. Therefore, that one is a file used for reference or for rookup purposes, and therefore it qualifies to be reference file. Then you have backup files. A backup file is used to hold duplicate copies, that is backups of data or information from the computer's fixed storage, that is the hard disk or the hard drive. These files are kept for security purposes. This is because the operational files held on the hard disk may be corrupted or lost or changed accidentally leading to loss or damage of existing information. It is therefore important to keep copies of the recently updated files so that in case of original file is corrupted or deleted, the backup file can be used in its place to or to reconstruct the original file. Therefore, backup is just a separate uh, copy of the original kept for security purposes. We also have sort files. Remember the term sort means arranging data is in either ascending or uh, descending order. Therefore, sort files are created from existing files such as master or trans, uh, transaction files and are used mainly for sorting data. That is, they are used to utter, to utter is to change the sequence of existing uh, files. A sort file is mainly used where data is to be processed sequentially. In sequential processing, data or records are first sorted and held on a magnetic tape before updating the master file. Then we have report files. A report file contains a set of relatively permanent records extracted from the data in a master file or generated after processing. Report files are used to prepare reports which can be printed at a later date. Example of report files, report on uh, overtime, report on taxes, report on students' class performance in the term ETC. We can also go ahead and look at the next subtopic, file organization. File organization refers to the way records are arranged or laid out within a particular file. The term file organization can also refer to the relationship of the key of a record to the physical location of that record in the computer file. File organization is very important because it determines the method of access, efficiency, flexibility, and storage devices to be used. Therefore, note down and write those down, uh, those points down. You can be asked in an exam situation to give the importance of file organization. Therefore, you can say it determines the method of access, it determines the efficiency, it determines the flexibility, it also determines the storage devices to be used. Then we have the following methods of uh, or modes of file organization, methods of uh, file organization. There are four methods by which records of a file can be arranged and accessed. This include, we have random file organization, we have serial file organization, we have sequential, and we also have index sequential file organization. Therefore, let's look at uh, each and uh, one of them in a comprehensive way. Let's start with random or direct, it's also called direct, random or direct file organization. In random or direct file organization, the records are stored in the file randomly and in no particular order. 
This implies that there is no relationship between two adjacent records. An algorithm or mathematical procedure is applied onto the record key to generate the address of the location where the record would be stored. Like for example, you can see we have record 2 with K2, record 3 with K3, record 8 with K2, uh, with K8, etc. And therefore, the Ks are the record keys. Therefore, to get them, that K is actually the one that is referenced. Random files are usually accessed direct. To access the file, the record key is used to determine where a record is stored on the storage media. Once the record is located, it is then read into the computer memory. This method is used by magnetic disks or optical disks. What are the advantages and disadvantages of this method? That is random file organization. Number one, records are quickly accessed. Files are easily updated. The method does not require the use of indexes, hence saving space. Transactions do not need to be sorted before being updated. New records can be easily inserted into a random file. Disadvantages of random file organization. We have data may be accidentally erased or overwritten unless special precautions are taken. Random files are less efficient in the use of storage space compared to sequentially organized files. Expensive hardware and software resources are required. Relatively complex when programming. Lastly, system design based on random file organization is complex and costly. Therefore, everything has its advantages and disadvantages. Then we have file, that is serial file organization. In serial file organization, records in a file are sorted one after the other in the order they come into the file without any particular sequence. The records are not sorted in any way on the storage media and therefore, and there is no relationship that exists between adjacent records. This type of organization in, is mostly used in magnetic tapes. Therefore, you can see we have record one, then we have the inter-record gap, IRG, Therefore, it is wasting a lot of space. Then we have record number two. Then we have a space. Record number three. Then we have a, a, a space. Therefore, we have the head. That is the beginning and the tail as the end. Serial files can be accessed serially. This involves searching through the entire file record by record, starting from the head of the file towards the tail. Note, serial access is suitable where all the record records in the file are to be read. This is because even the records that are not required must be passed over before locating the record of interest. Therefore, to access the 10th record in the file, then the computer reads the, the, the first nine records before reading the 10th record. That is what actually uh, it means. And therefore, it wastes a lot of time. Then we have sequential file organization. In sequential file organization, the records are arranged within the file serially, one after the other. However, in sequential file organization, the records are stored in a particular order, sorted using a key field. Hence, there is a relationship that exists between the adjacent records and the, rec and the key fields. Like for instance, you can see the diagram here. We have record one, K1, record two. This means that record one uh, is closely related to record 2, record 3 closely related to record 4. Sequential files are accessed sequentially, that is, the key field is used to search for a particular record required. Searching starts at the beginning of the file and proceeds sequentially towards the tail of the file until required a record is located. What are the advantages and disadvantages of sequential organization? The method is simple and easy to understand. Sequential files are easy to organize and maintain. Loading or reading a record requires only the record key. It is efficient and economical. 
relatively inexpensive errors in the feeds are actually uh, recognized or identified in an easy way. Then we have disadvantages of sequential organization. The entire file must be processed even when the number of files records to be processed is raw. Transactions must be sorted in the sequence of the master file before they can be processed or updated. Data redundancy. We talked of data lubrication is there. Then you have random inquiries are almost impossible to handle. Then lastly, you can look at the indexed sequential file organization. The records are arranged sequentially as in sequential files. However, indexed sequential files have an index that enables the computer to locate the individual records on the storage media. An index is the address of a particular cylinder or track. The indexes are used to point at the portions where the records are stored in groups. This allows a group of records that are not required in a particular processing run to be bypassed. And therefore, you can see uh, a diagram representation. We have A, we have B, we have C, uh, depicting records that are related. And therefore, to access a record in an indexed sequential file, the index of the records key field are used by the computer to search for the required record before it is read into the computer memory. Therefore, those are some of the uh, methods that are used there. You can also uh, look at random access or direct access. Therefore, this record, that is the records in random file are not sorted in any particular sequence of the file key field. This means that the records can be processed in any sequence. That is by moving access mechanisms forward and backwards around the file in an unordered manner to access records required. The method is suitable for raw activity files. Therefore, you can look at the advantages and the disadvantages. Then factors to consider when choosing the type of file organization to use. Number one is frequency of update. You will ask yourself how uh, frequent will I be updating the file. Then you can choose the method depending on the frequency of update. File activity, that is the type of file organization adopted should be based on the expected number of records to be processed, accessed in a particular run. Then you can also look at the method of file access. This refers to the method the computer shall use to transfer the contents of the file from the storage media into the computer. Remember, you can get uh, this uh, slide, these notes on my website. I repost the address of my website below this video. Therefore, you can get this note for further revision. Then you can also look of nature of the system, medium for storing the master file. Then we can go to the last subtopic of our topic. We have electronic data processing modes. Data processing modes, data processing modes describe the way in which, in which a computer under the influence of an operating system is designed to handle data or transactions during processing. The following are the types of electronic data processing mode. We have batch processing or offline processing or sequential. Some books will call it sequential, some books will call it offline. We have batch processing. We have online processing, real-time processing, time sharing, multi-programming, also called multitasking. We have multi-processing. We have distributed processing. We also have interactive processing. Let's uh, start with batch processing. In batch processing, data or transactions are collected, accumulated together over a specified period of time. For example, daily, weekly, monthly. The data is then input and processed at once or a single unit to produce a batch of output. For example, in a payroll, 
processing system, details of employees such as number of hours worked, rate of pay may be corrected for a period of one month, after which they are used to process the payment for the duration worked. Therefore, that is a very good example of uh, batch processing. Therefore, uh, data is accumulated then for a certain period of time, then processed at once. You can look at the application areas of, of four of, of batch processing system. Uh, you can talk of payroll systems. I have tackled of payroll system. It uh, can also be applied in printing system, like when printing a newspaper. You collect a lot of information, then process it at once. Advantages of batch processing. Batch systems are easy to develop. Processing of data in batches is efficient and economical. The cost of processing per unit is low. Batch, batching provides manageable units for control purposes. Timing of the information or reports is not a necessity. Disadvantages, there are delays in obtaining information. It leads to overloading of the processing facilities. Late information is not suitable in situations where instant decisions are required. It is difficult to provide the scheduling of the desired priority. Then we have online processing. In online processing, data or the input transactions are processed immediately they are received to produce the information required. Online processing occurs when the transactions are processed to update or make any change in a computer file immediately after the transactions occurs. In online processing, the operator communicates directly to the computer's operating system using commands, which are then interpreted by the supervisor. This means that the operator can interact with the system at any point of processing using the input-output facilities. Application area for online processing system, we have banking. A bank customer can make an inquiry using an online terminal. The system would then respond immediately by accessing the relevant file and inform the customer on the status. Then we have stock exchanges. Terminals located in major stock exchanges throughout the country enables quick processing of shares dealings stock control. Terminals located in warehouses enable stock records to be reordered automatically, make reservations, follow up of outstanding orders, and print picking lists. Also manufacturing plants. Therefore, you can be asked in an exam to give applications or areas where you can use online processing. You can, uh, uh, you can mention manufacturing plants, control, uh, stock control, stock exchanges at the banking systems. Then you can look at the real-time systems. A real-time system is capable of processing data so quickly such that the output produced are able to influence, control, or affect the outcome of the activity or process currently taking place. In a real-time data processing system, the computer receives and processes the incoming data as soon as it occurs, updates the transaction file, and gives an immediate response that would affect the events as they happen. The input originating workstations may be connected directly to the central processor by appropriate communication equipment. In this case, a transaction is processed and completed immediately or at the time it occurs. It also ensures quick update to the affected records. Then from there, uh, we can look at the applications areas for real-time system. Uh, we can talk of airline reservation system, a theater or cinema booking, hotel reservations, banking system for making inquiries about customers' accounts, police inquiry system, chemical processing uh, plants. Those are some of the areas that uh, can be explained 
that use real time use uh, systems therefore you can get this slide on my that is in my website or on my website you can download and read more on the uh, parts that i have over exp over researched on therefore you also have time sharing system in time sharing uh, processing the central processor allow two or more users who have different processes requirements to use one computer at the same time. The terminal users are usually connected to the central computer using communication links. The central processing unit time or the CPU time is divided out equally among the users and each user is allowed a time slice, a brief period when he or she is allowed to access the CPU. The amount of time allocated to each user and the switching from one job to another is controlled by a multi-user operating system. The operating system normally assigns priorities to the various jobs entering the system. Therefore, you have um, actually run this one in form one that is in a computer operating system. An illustration. The operating system may give each terminal user 5 seconds to submit a job. The user sits at the terminal and issues commands to the OS. After every 5 seconds, the central computer checks all the terminal to see if there is any user who needs assistance. If a particular terminal does not need the service, the computer goes on to the next uh, terminal. You can read more and more on this. You will get this slide from uh, my website. Application areas we can talk of running institution where there are many users like a university system, e-learning system, the bureaus. Then we can go to the next one, multi-programming system. It is also called multitasking or multitasking. It refers to a type of processing where more than one program residing in the computer memory are executed concurrently by a single processor. A multi-programming system allows the user to run, to run two or more programs, all of which are in computer's main memory at the same time. The jobs are scheduled to run automatically by the processor under the influence of multi-programming or multitasking OS operating system that is. Therefore, every part is given a time slice. We covered this in Form 1. You can still uh, go and check my slide on operating systems and look on the explanation of uh, how time sequences and job scheduling is done. Then we can go to distributed processing. Distributed processing, that is distributed data processing, refers to dividing processing tasks among two or more computers that are located on physically separate sites, but connected by data transmission media. For example, an organization may have various computers that are located at various departments or business sites, but linked together by communication lines. In such a case, each individual department or business site is being served individually by its own computer resources. The computers are different at different departments are usually of limited processing power and only serve as terminals from the various departments. They are then connected to a central computer of enhanced processing ability, such as mini or mainframe. We call that computer uh, server. Then we can look at the application areas of distributed uh, processing we can see in the banks all the branches have intelligent terminals usually microcomputers linked to a big computer at the head office the computers accounts are operated on the servers in the branches where data from the branches is sent to the main server where it is processed some of the advantages include the load on the host computer is generally reduced the distribution of processing power increases efficiently. 
the use of low cost microcomputers minimizes the cost of data processing delays in the data processing are reduced it provides better service to the customers there is less risk of system breakdown the design and implementation of the system is less complex due to decentralized decentralization the level of expertise required is less the disadvantages may include it is expensive due to the extra cost of communication equipment data deprecation is very common Pro, uh, programming problems occur with micro and mini computers more training is needed for the users which now makes it even more expensive then we have the interactive processing interactive processing occurs if the computer and the terminal user can communicate with each other it allows a two way communication between the user and the computer as the program executes it keeps on prompting the user to provide input or respond to prompts displayed on the screen in other words the user makes the request and the computer gives the responses in interactive processing the data is processed individually and continuously as transactions take place and output is generated instantly interactive processing is most applied in ticket reservation systems then we have multi processing systems multi processing systems multi processing systems um It is used uh, when you want to process more than one task at the same time on different processors of the same computer. In multiprocessing system, a computer may have two or more independent processors which work together in a coordinated manner and are sharing the same computer memory. This means that at any given time, the processors could execute instructions from two or more different programs or different parts of one program simultaneously in such systems each cpu is dedicated to one type of application that uh, for example one cpu may handle a terminal user where another may process only the batch jobs therefore uh, this is the use of different um, cpus sharing the same memory and residing in the same computer it is also very crucial for us to wrap up the topic by looking at factors to consider when selecting the data processing mode factors to consider when selecting the data processing mode number 1 type of computer configuration to install if you want to use something like interactive format user then you have to ask yourself which type of computer configuration should i install number 2 suitability of accumulating data that is transactions into batches for processing therefore you need to have a computer with a good or big hard disk how the processing time would be optimized also how fast the information should be provided if it is to be used for decision making cost of acquiring the relevant hardware software storage media and the cost of maintenance that is the cost of the overall staff ease of development use and subsequent maintenance how the resources for example files input output devices would be controlled the data communication equipment needed the cost involved and their convenience the need for sharing resources among several users therefore i remember to get these notes remember to get this right in uh, on my website I will drop the link down here you can download therefore for more and more information i skipped some of the most detailed uh, slides and uh, for example summarized therefore you can uh, get the thread and read in depth then um this is the end or that is the end of my presentation that is the end of uh, topic number two in form three uh, you can visit my website www.ichaidon.com
www.ecpsa.co.ke I have dropped the link down this video. Uh, therefore, you can download these notes and other materials. Remember to subscribe if you have not uh, yet subscribed, share to your friends and also uh, like my videos. Therefore, thank you very much for watching. See you.